Hello, everyone. God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to share a testimony this morning about the goodness of God. And for that, I want to take you on. Um, actually, what I want to say is that if God did it for me, I believe that he can do it for you too. Our God is loving. Our God is great. Our God is, I, I cannot even find words to describe who our God is is. And I just want to take you through the Bible. Daniel 4 verse 2 says, it is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the most high God has performed for me. This morning, if I'm sitting here, it's because I just want to share testimonies, testimonies. So there are many. God is good, my friends. God is good. When the confinement started, uh, I was told by my work that I'm not going to receive any salary, which is uh, the case actually because I was um, I had a contract. I have a contract that they call bank staff, which means that when I'm, I am paid if I work, if I don't work, I'm not paid. Basically, that's the contract, and uh, that's the contract I have because I am a pastor. And uh, I want to be free to travel anytime. So I have accepted that and it's really convenient for me. So what happens is um, that since then, as soon as I got that, I decided that I'm just going to give gifts. I'm going to actually offer gifts to people. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. And I said to the church, yes, there is confinement. The whole world is locked down but heaven is open. I'm not going to leave as if I'm scared of my future. I'm not going to leave thinking, oh my God, I cannot spend, I cannot do this, I cannot give because I'm not going to have anything coming in until September. I'm going to go counter current because my God says that it is all by faith. And I remember what Matthew 6 says, if God feeds the birds in heaven, how much more me? If God clothes the birds in heaven, how much more me? So I'm not going to live like those people who become scared of their future and they cannot do any good. The next day after I received this, I actually uh, gave money, gave money, you know, gifts, donations. You know, it was on purpose just to show that I'm not scared. It's not because I know that I will not have money coming in that I've got to be squeezing myself. No, I'm not going to live like that. I've got a God. And that God is big. So I want to tell you what has happened in the couple, last couple of days since last week. Today we are the 30th of May. And since last week, I will tell you what has happened in my life. It first started with one day I'm here at my home and one of my neighbor knocks at my door. And she said, oh, she received lots of food, tomatoes. And I had, actually, I was coming from uh, shopping. And that day I forgot to buy potatoes. I did forget to buy potatoes and tomatoes, something like that. There were two things that she had on her package that I had forgotten to buy. So she's like, oh, she, I, she was giving so much food and she wanted to just share with me if I wanted to. I said, oh yeah, of course, I'll take it, no problem. So she brought it and there were tomatoes, there were onions, pasta, pasta sauce, potatoes, lots of food, a big bag. So I glorified God for that. And a few days later, her husband was come, 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 came at my door, knocking at my door as well. They always come and knock at my door. And he said, oh, can I wash your car? I'm like, okay. It was kind of muddy. It was really muddy. I said, yeah. Why not? <laughs> at first, I was surprised. So, and he washed my car. He washed it even better than when I went and paid for my car to be washed. <laughs> Honestly, he washed my car. And the day after, the next day, the day following, I went out. I went outside, and then my son is calling me, saying, Mom, there's a neighbor here. She says she's going shopping and she would like to shop for you. I said, Okay. And I thought, Is it the black lady, the Jamaican lady who gave me food the other day? He's like, No. It's the other, it's the Indian lady. I'm like, Indian lady? I don't even know her name. My friend, so she skipped a house 
to come to my door, knock at my door, because he wants to go and do shopping for me. I've got to stop here and really say, yes, I need to share this testimony. Then, yesterday, I went shopping, and I went in a shop, and I wanted to buy yam, and there was just one left. And I took it, and I gave to the, 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 the man at the counter, and then he tried to slice it to have to get the bad pieces out. And we saw that it wasn't terrible. So I, and then I said, oh, you know what? I don't even want it. Just leave it. Then I left his counter. Now I went to buy meat. The next minute I see this man coming to me where I was with a bag. And he said, oh, take the yam. Take it for free. I said, well, thank you. And he said, pray for me. That's what he told me. Pray for me. I said, glory be to God. I said, I will pray for you. And I did pray yesterday. And I also brought his prayer in our intercession group and we did pray for him. Then I finished buying the meat and I got some okra because I wanted to do some okra too. And then this same man, who is a Muslim, by the way, he's a Muslim, came to me and then I, okay, I went to him with the okra because he's the one who was doing, selling uh, vegetables and, you know, so... I wanted to buy uh, uh, this okra and then I said, oh, this is 10 pounds. I had a note. And then I said, okay, let me just check if I've got enough coins. As I was looking for coins, I didn't have enough. I just put the coins on the table and my 10 pounds was there. He took the coins, gave me my 10 pounds and said, you just take it and go. <laughs> but pray for me. So I said, I will. And that alone made me to stop today. And I want to say this. Right, let me read this scripture first. Mark. 5 verse 19 says, Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And this is exactly what I want to share with you this morning. When we are in need, God knows our needs. God doesn't want us to cry. God doesn't want us to be, you know, seeking help from people. God himself has come to me through different people to bless me at a time of my needs, at a time when he knows that I need, amen? He is sending people to bless me. And I'm not even talking about those who have blessed me in my bank account without me asking for anything. I'm not even telling about those ones who have been, you know, just helping me. I'm not even saying anything about that. Just to tell you that, yes, we are in a time of confinement, but we also need to know that when we serve God with one heart, when we are doing what the word of God is telling us to do, God will fulfill his word in our lives. God will fulfill his promises in our lives. God will never abandon you. God will never, ever allow you to be in a position to ask someone because he already knows your needs. Do I pray? No. No. I've not prayed like, Lord, look at me. Oh my God, you know what? What am I going to do until September with that income? God knows my situation. He knows it. I don't need to remind him. And I also want to tell you this. He says, seek my kingdom first and my righteousness and everything else shall be added. That is what I am experiencing right now. Things are being added without me having to even say, Lord, I need. God is blessing me through people. Not only Christians, the Indian lady, she's, she goes to a temple. The Muslim man, he goes to a mosque, mosque. So can we understand that God knows our situations? And also, when you are serving God, what do you normally do? Many people are so ungrateful. I am generous because my God is generous. I give and give and give and don't count. I give and I will continue giving because I know that when I give, I am actually putting my money in a bank account in heaven. So on due time, on due course, when I need it, it will just come down. Amen. I put my money into serving God, regardless of what people say, regardless of what people do. I'm not doing it based on what church members are doing. I do it because it's my father. He is my father. And I have to do the work of God because I'm doing it for my father. The Bible says that everything we do, we have to do it as if we are doing it unto the Lord. 
I'm not doing it because I want to please man or show man, but I'm doing it for my father. So I want to encourage you this morning and say that, what, what is your relationship with the Lord? What have you put in the kingdom? Because whatever we put is a seed. When you plant a seed, on due time, the fruit of the seed come out. God blesses us with our own seeds that he has already multiplied. Amen. It is your seed that God will multiply to return to you. I believe that. I believe that. That is the reason why I always say that I will never lack. And you know the reason why I'm giving even more and I continue. Even in this time of confinement, I was keeping my tithes and I gave my tithe. I did. Because I'm doing it not only for me, but for my children, the children of my children, the children of my children, the children of my children. I don't want them to ever lack. King David said that he was young and he became old. Let me get the scripture. And he's never seen the righteous lacking. And when I understood that scripture, when I understood that scripture, I said, this is my scripture. Amen. I'm not going to allow anything. Amen. That, that, that to happen. Amen. I'm going to read it. It's Psalms 37 verse 25. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children be begging bread. I would never beg for bread. Never. Because I have understood that I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous in Christ. Therefore, as I do what the word of God expects me to do, I would never ever lack bread. My children would never ever lack bread. The children of my children would never ever lack bread. And it is not only because I am righteous. It is because I continue to apply the principles of God in giving. God is a giver. He gave Jesus. It was not free. Jesus was bought. They gave Judas money. And today, many people are saving. You're saving because you're scared of the future. Well, save on earth. I am saving in heaven. Because on due time, it all comes back to me. This is one thing that is happening right now. I have been seeing it with my own eyes. It's been like that for two weeks now. Things are just being given to me. Given, given. And the way God is doing it is even marvelous. Actually, it started last month. I remember I went to the to one of the supermarkets. I'm in a supermarket and they are bringing a big plant, a big plant around um, the Passover, Easter. And they gave it to me. They offered to me a big plant. I was like, I don't need a plant. And the lady's like, yeah, yeah, you, you, can, you can have it. They gave me a big, huge plant. Amen. So I want to encourage you and say that God is faithful. Don't be scared to serve him with all you have. He does not want only, only your mouth to say, God, I love you. He wants your action. He wants your heart. Your action says volumes. You can say, Lord, I love you. If you love your child and your husband and you don't give them food or a shelter, how do they consider that? God is not asking us anything. He's asking us only to give what he has given us in, for, in the first place. And to use it in our community or the people he's bringing around us in a way that he can be glorified. We are not giving to be glorified. We are giving for God to be glorified. And that alone, when it's, you are in need, God will remember. Many people are suffering because they do not give. They don't, don't give. There's more in giving than in receiving. Receive that word today. Be strengthened and stand strong. Stand strong in the word of God. Start giving. Give, especially when you do not have. That is the time you must give. Jesus said that is the woman, the widow, who gave everything that she had, who had given the most. Yes, when the church speaks about giving, people say, yeah, the church speaks about giving, giving, giving. But I also wanted to come and say that, you know what? We give, but we receive much more. Much more. We cannot even start counting what we receive. 
I know that whatever I ask God for in prayer, if I ask in the morning, I have it in the afternoon. Whether it be healing, whether it be material things. Am I, am, I, am I rich as the world says? No, but I am rich in Christ. That's what I call being rich. I consider myself to be rich in Christ because I'm never in a need. When I am in need, before I say, Lord, he gives me. That is being rich. I consider myself to be a rich person in Christ because I'm not in a need. I don't have to go and beg for anything. I don't need to call someone. I cannot start naming the things that God has done for me just in the two months and a half of this time of lockdown. The things that God has done, I cannot name them. It's just amazing. So I just want to give him all the glory and say, yes, yes, we receive when we give because God will multiply from what you give. If you give zero, you give nothing. When he multiplies one million by zero, you still got zero. So learn that God is a giver, but he wants you to give, not because he wants you to give. It's only for you to express your faith in giving. Stay blessed in Jesus' name.